and could you possibly do that? They only use, I mean, there's so much empty space on that ark that's not being used, right? right. And, uh, and still they've got all the cages and they've got every kind of, of animal, every class there. Uh, you know, the cage, they don't have real animals, they have some of them that look, really look real. But the, the, the uh, robots that they have in there are so lifelike. Okay, they are so. And in my at first glance, you know, I actually thought. Did you actually think some of those were real people at first glance when you looked at them? Okay. Yeah, at the Creation Museum, they had the same thing. They had. I mean, they are very, very lifelike. And at the Creation Museum, the guy that was, the guy that was mocking uh, Noah. You know, when I walked, I couldn't believe it. He, they have the guy he's sitting there and he's talking about why you know why is this guy building this ark? Very lifelike. I mean, really looks. And the eyes, you know how when you look in the eyes of you know someone who's human, you can see things. And their their eyes are extremely lifelike too. Is there any dinosaurs? Huh? Is there any dinosaurs? Yeah, there's dinosaurs. And okay. where are these places? This is on Noah's Ark, Grandma. Where? In Kentucky. Oh. It's in Kentucky. It's a uh, northern just Kentucky, of Cincinnati. down by oh. Cincinnati, not south. far from Cincinnati. Oh, just across the river? Yeah, yeah. a little ways. Covington. Just a little ways across the river oh, there. Okay. Yeah, and uh, well, it, it is just amazing. I think really everybody should see that once in their lifetime. Uh, so, anyhow, are we ready now? Mm -hmm. Are we ready over there? Okay. Good morning, doers of the word. We're coming to you from Doers of the Word Baptist Church at 14781 Sperry Road in Newberry, Ohio this morning. And the title of the message is Why Dead People Always Vote Democrat. Why Dead People Always Vote Democrat. Now, in that film that we watched yesterday, you know the answer for that. But we're going to start in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. For all this I consider to my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean and to the unclean and to him that sacrifices and to him that sacrifices not. As is the good, so is the sinner. And he that sweareth, as he that feareth the oath. This is an evil among all things are done under the sun. And there is one event unto all, yea, all the heart of the sons of men, full of evil and madness in their heart while they live. And after that they go to the dead. For to him that is joined to all, the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more reward. If the memory of them is forgotten. And their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished, and neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Well, what Solomon is saying is, that God will do some good to everybody at some time in their life. Huh? God knowing what lies ahead for all of his creation will sometimes take little children home whom he loves dearly. He'll take them home early so that they won't have to suffer. He is saying that we can trust God to render a true and just judgment according to our works. He's saying that a dog which was least esteemed by man in the Eastern culture, as long as he's still alive, can repent and, and uh, place up crowns in heaven. But even a lion, which was the most highly esteemed of all animals, if he was dead, had no hope at all. Obviously, he's associating that with people, the, those that are least esteemed and those that are the highest esteemed. Uh, 
The Bible tells very clearly that it's appointed all men to once to die, and then the judgment. Solomon says that the dead know not anything. He is referring to what is taking place here on earth. The saints in heaven are very, very aware of the glorious things in heaven. Those in hell are very, very aware of their torment. But then the question arises, how can so many dead folks vote in every election? And why do they vote 100% of the time for democratic communists? Now I have a theory. that these dead voters are not the deceased, but are in fact those that are dead in their sin. Now what kind of a person would vote for Hillary? Turn to James chapter 4. The one verse we read here is verse 4. You adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So Hillary, Hillary is the ultimate enemy of God, is as Obama was. She has referred to people of faith and uh, American patriots as deplorables, unredeemable meaning being beyond the ability to be assimilated into the collective New World Order. She has said that the church under her regime would be forced to change its long-held religious beliefs. Now death and murder follow her like a shadow on a sunny day. She is ruthless and cold and calculating. She even claims to be a Christian who when whom she hates. She hates God. She hates his children. Uh, turn to Revelation chapter 2. In Revelation chapter 2, starting with verse 18. And to the angel of, of the church of Thyatira write these things, they hate the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works in charity and service and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because that sufferest the woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess to teach, and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her space to repent, her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and then they commit adultery with her into the great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill their children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and the hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works, but unto you, I say, and unto the rest of Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. But that which you have already hold, hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nation. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him among the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. Well, Hillary, she claims to be a, a Christian. And at the same time, saying that Christians are going to have to change their beliefs. You're going to have to accept everything that God's Word, the Bible, calls sin. You're going to have to accept child killing, abortion, sodomy. If the Bible calls it a sin, and by the way, you little people will learn your place. You little people will learn your place. Hillary is a pathological liar. In her own words, she says that you must always have two positions. 
one for the public consumption of the little people, and another for the rich and the powerful. I heard her say it. I did too. You heard her say it too, yeah. Mm -hmm. She was speaking. She has corrupted along with Obama the government on every level. Attorney General Loretta Lynch sold her soul to the Clinton in the back of an airplane sitting on the tarmac. <clears throat> FBI Director Comey became six million dollars richer and all he had to do is not bring criminal charges against the largest crime cartel in the history of America. For you that weren't here, we just announced, we showed that film, uh, Hillary's America, along with Amerigeddon last night. And by the way, uh, Peg, we did all right. We did almost $1,200. Okay. And uh, that film, just let, just shout out, was that film powerful or was it powerful? Excellent. We're going to show it again this Saturday here, because the people here haven't seen those two. They haven't seen uh, Hillary's America or Amerigeddon. But it's, we're not going to do the whole food thing. Just going to show the film uh, from about 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock. And just, we might have coffee and, and donuts and that's it. Okay. Uh, every corrupt government and corporation in the world knows that Hillary, through the State Department, was selling America piece by piece. She even managed to sell 20% of American uranium to Russia. She keeps talking about these bad Russian people. These bad, you know what, I got a feeling, folks, and I can't prove this, but I got a feeling it's not the Russians that are bringing out all of these emails. I got a feeling it might be coming from Obama Nation himself. I don't know. NSA. NSA. Huh? The NSA. It could be the NSA. They got it all. Mm, from all of us. And so, anyhow, remember, we're living in a a world that is the, uh, as, as God's Word, the Bible, so clearly, clearly defines this is the great apostasy. This is the great apostasy. Uh, so, Hillary was given the Margaret Sanger Award for being the most wicked woman in America. They only give that award to the most vile, evil people that they can find. Now, what kind of people would vote for Hillary? Turn to Romans chapter 1. And I understand that it looks like they just got another talk show, radio talk show host just ended up room temperature and he was another one of those people that was exposing Hillary and all of her corruptness. And so, in Romans chapter 1, starting in verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest to them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. In other words, the entire universe cries out and gives witness to God. Folks, I mean, the, the entire universe out there, everywhere you turn, you see the works of God. So no one, nobody has an excuse. Nobody. Right. In fact, the invisible things he's talking about, you know, you, you these people that try to, you know, and last week we preached on, on the, the illusions that the Lord says he'll pick the illusions for wicked people. And one of the greatest illusions that's ever been put on on the world, and especially in America here, is the illusion of evolution. Evolution is mathematically impossible. You know, they, they have a, a saying that uh, figures never lie, but liars often figure, okay? And uh, that that is so very true. Now, that, that held true <laughs> until Common Core came along. You see, because math was always an exact science. I mean, my entire life, one on one, always equal to. And, uh, you know, and it's been that way for millenniums, right? Two and two equals four, right? Until Common Core came along. And now they've got all different kinds of numbers. It's, what, it's however you feel, and it's not the answer. 
that you come up. It's 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 how you come to the answer, right? So, I'm going to try that the next time I buy a car. <laughs> okay, and see if it'll work. I don't think I'll get very far. More likely, the car dealer will be ahead of me and uh, be working the other way. But anyhow, when when these people, just ask them this. You talk about DNA. Who put the information in the DNA? How did it get there? God. Right, folks? Uh, did the information that is in that DNA, that is programmed, believe me, uh, the, the information in your DNA is so, so, so far advanced from any technology we have today. I mean, light years ahead of any technology that we have today. And they claim that that technology kind of crawled out of a primordial pool, primordial pool. I don't think so. But when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was dark, darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. I can tell you, uh, I have never seen in any area a greater group of what I would call plain, outright fools as those that are teaching in the universities today. Okay. We've often said, it, and some of them are now saying the same thing that used to be you could become as ignorant as you wanted to be on the cheap. It didn't cost you anything. Okay. Now to be really as ignorant as you can be, you literally have to go to Yale or Harvard and really study hard to be as dumbed down as you can possibly be. And change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible men and the birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. I think that's kind of has a hint uh, speaking towards our environmental movement today, the EPA. Yeah. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness to the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. See, we're the creature, so if you don't know what that means, he's talking about men worshipers, those that worship men. Uh, throughout the years, you, you have people that literally worship people like uh, that Jamie Foxx, an abomination. Uh, so, so many people came out when they, when they actually said, when you had thousands of people gathered there and they said, we want to give thanks to our Lord and Savior, Barack Obama. I saw him, I heard him say it to folks. Okay? And, uh, for this cause, God gave them up to vile affection for even their women to change the natural use to that which is against nature. We're talking about the kind of people that would vote for Hillary Clinton. And you know, it's one of the interesting things because you have all of these uh, illegal, illegitimate voting early there in Virginia. Thousands, they have thousands of uh, illegal aliens have already voted for Hillary. And so, and these are the people uh, that want to make sure that you don't have to have, they, they say it's, it's discriminatory to have to have an ID to vote. Now they don't say that to have to get your welfare check, right? To get your, your welfare check, you, you have to have your ID in that. That's not discriminatory, but to, to vote, right? The Democratic Party is so corrupt. They are, in every single way, corrupt. There's nothing about them that is not corrupted. And Saturday, if you come and you watch that movie, it gives you a history of the Democratic Party. And you should be there. And if you don't show up, then, well, you deserve to be dumbed, dumbed down. You really deserve to be dumbed down. It, go, it goes back into the entire history. It goes all the way back prior to the Civil War. It is really, really. Right? Am I telling them, Peg? Say it loud. Yep, you're, you're telling them. That's not loud. <laughs> Say, yeah, you're telling them like yep. that. Go ahead, you can do it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you did good. All right. Amen. And likewise, also men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly. And we, you know, that's the Democratic Party plank. And receiving in himself the recompense of the error which was me. 
And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate mind to do the things which were not convenient. And that's exactly what it's all about. But that's what they're doing to the, to the children in the public school system. You know, folks, how bad it is. Look, remember how I kept telling you, if you love your kids, get them out of the public school. Yeah, yeah. If you love your kids, get them out of the public school. If you love them, get them out of there, right? 60% now of the young people in college, 60% think that socialism is a better way of government than free enterprise. 60%. This is pitiful, pathetic. True. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers. These are not good things. No. These are not good characteristics. No, it's not. These are not good attributes. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, and disobedient to parents. without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Now listen to this. You see, this last verse really, really sums it up. Okay? It really sums it up. How many times have you heard people say, personally, I would never do that. But I'm not going to judge those that do. Okay? All the time. All the time. And personally, I, I think marriage is only between a man and a woman. I would never do that. Or personally... I would never have an abortion. And Carol Everett said what? She said, listen, whenever you hear these women say that I personally would never have an abortion, but I'm not going to condemn those women that do, that's code word in the industry, for I've already had at least one. She says, so when you hear them say that, believe me, they've had at least one. Who knowing the judgment of God, that way that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. That describes Obama and sodomy to a T. That describes him. Remember we told you back, all the way back in 2008, that he was a sodomite. Remember he came out? Yeah. Well, we have another film uh, that he's talking to the sodomites, and he's telling them, I get elected. If I get elected, you're going to get same-sex marriage. Uh, At the same time, nope. he's, same -sex he's doing just like Hillary said. You have to have the two different positions. One for the, for the little people out there, for the public consumption. Another for those of, of what power and influence. Hmm. And he's telling this Hollywood a sodomite, you get me in and I will deliver to you. And that's exactly what he did, huh? And then turn over, you know, people that, that hate God, the Bible says that, uh, that those nations that forget their God will be turned into hell. And those, all people that hate God, love death. If they hate God, they love death. And turn to Proverbs chapter 1. In Proverbs chapter 1, verses 8 through 33. Let's go with verses 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us. Now listen, if you listen to this very carefully, this is communism. Yep. This is liberalism. He's describing to you communism of today. Or liberalism of today. However you want to call it. It's all the same. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privately for the innocent without cause. That's exactly what they're doing with abortion. And believe me, uh, if you would have attended earlier this spring, you know, we went to the Euthanasia Conference, and Peg was there, weren't you? That was good, too. Yeah. She said that was good, too. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, uh, it talked about you folks there, because I've noticed that some of you people out here are ancient. But uh, those of you, what they were talking about is uh, when you get to be 70, <laughs> when you get to be 70, then uh, you should no longer receive anything but comfort care. In other words, if you need a transplant, no transplants. If you need an operation, a hip, no hip replacements, none of that. 
just comfort care because you're not worth spending the money on. Oh, yeah. See, it was you that built the country. It was you that put all your money into Social Security. Uh, but uh, now you've got the new world order out there. And that's what they're talking about, those that work privately for innocent mm -hmm. blood. And if you won't stand up and fight it, you deserve it. Yeah. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down to the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us, let us all have one purse. You know what that's called? Huh. Yeah, it's called doing what? What is that called? What did Obama say he wanted to do with the wealth? Share the wealth. Redistribute the wealth. Redistribute the wealth. From those, in fact, he said this, from those that have earned it to those that deserve it. Lazy bombs. My son, walk not in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil, and their haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay wait for their own blood, and lurk privately for their own lives. So are the ways of every one that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. And you see, that's exactly what communism teaches. Karl Marx taught that it was moral for a people uh, to, to rob and steal and to kill the wealthy. That it was that it was moral. He referred to the proletariat as useful idiots, but he taught the useful idiots, the proletariat, that it would be uh, morally acceptable to go out and kill the wealthy people, the capitalists, and take whatever they've earned. Wisdom crieth without; she uttereth her voice in the streets. Pay close attention to this, folks. This is one of the problems with America today. God's been, been preaching and teaching to people. People are what? They're at ease. They're not paying attention. They're not awake. They're sleeping when they should be awake. What does he say in 2 Thessalonians? But you are not of the people of the night. You're not sleeping. You're awake. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city. She uttereth her voice. That's where they did all of the business, in the gates of the city. She's talking about government and business. You know, the NFL is losing. They've been losing some listenership, attendance at the games. And I'm glad I will not attend another NFL. Until I hear repentance coming out of the NFL, I won't attend a game. I won't, I, you couldn't pay me to go to one. I wouldn't give them 10 cents, or the NBA either one. For those of you that don't understand why, it's because they have come out and they have taken a hard pro-homosexual stand. And they have said to any state that will, that will not allow sodomy, sodomite marriages, then they will pull their franchises out of that state. And so what's happened to them? The governor of North Carolina stood his ground. He said, no, we're not going to go that way. And their business actually increased, okay? Their business actually increased. They didn't, they didn't buckle in. They didn't sell their soul to the NFL. They've all gone a whoring. They've become whores. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity and scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge? That's people that aren't paying attention when God's speaking, they should be reading their Bibles during the week. Amen. You know, everything that's going to happen that's out ahead of you is here. It's contained in here. Okay? Yep. So you can waste your time on comic books or the internet. Sometimes they're one and the same. Okay? Or if you're wise, and if you're not a simpleton, you, need, you should go to the Bible. Amen. See, that's what the Bible's telling you here. The Word of God is telling you that if you are not a simpleton, you'll come here and you'll listen, right? And then he, he tells you the consequences for not paying attention. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my Spirit into you. 
I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and you have refused. This is what you're trying to get across to the people. Wake up. God speaking. Right. It's a lot later than you think. Yes. Amen. It's a lot later than you think. Things are happening in this country very quickly. Yes. This is why you really need to watch this film that we're going to show, Amerigeddon, because it shows you what you can expect to happen. And it could happen any time. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But you have said it not all of my counsel and would have none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. Yes. I will mock when your fear cometh. And that will happen yes. to the people that don't pay attention. That will happen to you. It's going to catch you. Mm -hmm. God's yeah. telling you that right yeah. here. He's telling you it's going to catch you. Yes. So you need to pay attention. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Amen. They would have none of my counsel and despised all of my reproof. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of the fool shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth to me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Folks, it's pretty clear, isn't it? But you need to do it. You know, we're running out of time. Yes. I want you to go over to Jude. Chapter 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Do you hear what he's telling you? He's he telling you that there are those that are preserved in Christ. That means you cannot, 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 cannot lose your salvation. Right. Okay? And you're sanctified and called. Now you see, you got to wonder... If you're one of the sanctified and called, if you are, then you're preserved. But in other words, where's your heart at? Do you have this burning, this fire in you to serve God? Or are you kind of just, you know, I give God a little bit of time, you know, but I got my life. You know, get alive. I'll give God, I'll give him and he's got to be satisfied with what time I give him, right? Yeah. Believe me, folks, that's the way most people are. And that's what most people are going to regret. Now, all I can do... The Bible says for me to be a watchman to warn the people. You see now, the hireling don't really care. Right. Hireling cares about one thing, getting right. warm bodies, body count, getting enough people in the church, and getting enough money in that plate. Okay, That's what the hireling cares about. Yeah. Okay, The shepherd does not want you to come short of God's glory. The shepherd does not want you to end up in hell. The shepherd does not want you to be a part of what the Lord Jesus speaks about in Matthew 7, where he says, Many are called, but few are chosen. Many will come, but few will enter. Because people are under a, a false understanding. They think because they come to church and they sit there, and to their minds they bear up for a whole hour of preaching things that... Uh, that really aren't that interesting to them. They've got a life to live. They don't get it, right? And then they're going to find out it will be the most rude awakening that they ever had because the Lord said, In those days I will say to them, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. I never knew you. You see, if you are saved, then you will have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And if you are not involved, and if you are not working and doing the Lord's work, if your heart's not towards the Lord, boy, you better doubt your salvation. Peter said, if the righteous scarcely, scarcely are saved, boy, you better really take a close look at it. 
Right now is the time. Because people every day in this country, people are running out of tomorrows. Every day. Faster than you know. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied to Beloved, whom I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. The common salvation is simply everybody gets saved the same way. They repent of their sin and they call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And that's only when the Holy Spirit turns you to do such. Only when the Holy Spirit, you see... You think that, well, we're doing this here. I made the decision to get saved. No. No. The Bible says that alone, that there's none good. No, not one. We're not saved by works, but by grace, lest any man should boast. Amen? Amen. And that faith that was once delivered, today they've got all kinds of New Age teachings out there all over the place. They've got over a hundred different perversions of the Bible now. So whatever it is you want to believe, you can pretty much find it in one of the apostate perversions of the Bible. See, you're living in those times here. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were from before of old ordained to the condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Those men are in the majority in the church today. Those men are in the majority in the church today. Bible-believing gospel preachers today are in a very, very small minority. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he reserved an everlasting change under darkness unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh is set forth for an example of suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Do you notice how many times in the Bible where God brings a harsh, harsh judgment upon a people? Sodom and Gomorrah is mentioned. That sin of sodomy, that sin that is so prevalent in America today. That sin that is so prevalent in America today. Two sins in the Bible which the Lord calls abominations and he, and he brought the harshest judgment for the first is abortion. He brought the harshest judgment on the people for killing the children, where he reduced them to cannibalism. Yeah. The second is sodomy. Likewise also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him rallying accusations but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally is brute beasts and those things they corrupt themselves. These people like that Kennedy and the others to come out and they said that they talked about the Catholics and the Christians having their um, what do they call it? Archaic beliefs. They're going to have to be changed. <laughs> these are exactly what he's talking about, these brute beasts here. Woe unto them, for they have gone away after Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perish to the gainsaying of court. You see, that's what the prosperity preachers will do. They'll preach whatever somebody is willing to pay them to preach. They are spots in your feasts of charity, and when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds. The clouds always refers to as the people, the nations, and without water meaning they're worthless. They're worthless people. Trees whose fruit withereth, 
without fruit twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the seas, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars. Boy, does that describe Hollywood. Doesn't it? Well, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever? And Enoch, by the way, this is the oldest prophecy in all of Scripture right here. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesies of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon, upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and all of their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts and their mouths speaking great swelling words having men's persons and admirations because of advantage. But beloved, remember you the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. Have any of you noticed the mockers out there? Yes. <laughs> we got a lot of them today, don't we? These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit, but you, beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some compassion, making a difference. And others say with fear, of pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. He's talking about witnessing to people. Witnessing to people witnessing. Amen. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to the present you faultless before the presence of glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. And turn to Malachi chapter 3. This is again I, I finished the last message with this and I want to do the same because the application is so good. Starting in verse 6 he says, For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore you sons of Jacob are consumed. Even from the days of your father you are gone away from mine ordinance. Somehow people think that uh, you know times have changed. That's that's the God of the Old Testament. He's, we haven't seen him around lately so uh, uh, maybe, maybe he's become more politically correct. Not nah. You see, God's immutable. And, and uh, listen, God doesn't believe all of these polls any more than we do. <laughs> I mean, if they can't fool us, right? Even from the days of your father, you are going away from... Oh, let's see. Yeah. Even from the days of your fathers, you are going away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you said, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, but you said, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You know, uh, I got this article here. Fact checked. Hillary said 90% of the Clinton Foundation's donations go to charity. Actual number, 5.7%. And here they had these people in Haiti rioting, rioting, because they saw in the news that the Clintons had raised all of these hundreds of millions of dollars, and they weren't getting any of it. You know, they only got just a very small portion of it. But the news media, NBC, ABC, CBS, all of the Clinton news media, was telling the world how generous they were. And these people are starving to death over there, the earthquake victims in, in Haiti. And he says, Well, a man robbed God, yet you have robbed me, but you say, Wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed even the whole nation. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now, where here with the Lord of hosts, if I will not open unto you windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, and there should not be room enough to receive it. I have never once seen God fail when many, many times I said, you know what, I should, I should give a little more than what I'm giving today. And always got back. 
and, and just testing the faith to see, you know, people will say, well, well, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make the phone bill. I'm going to be able to trust the Lord. Amen. Just trust Him. Just trust Him. He never fails. Amen. And He says, bring you, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, and there shall not be enough room to receive it. And boy, I'm going to tell you, shame on people that don't tithe. Shame on people that don't tithe. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, what you're doing, if you don't tithe, uh, you're sending a message to the Lord, and He's going to show you. He's going to give you so much room, but to whom much is given, much is required. The Lord Jesus said, Amen. Had you not been told, had you not been shown, you'd have no sin. But since you've been told, and since you've been shown, you've got no cloak. Right. And He will give you a couple times till, till, to learn. And after that, shame on you. Mm -hmm. And I will... Prove me now therewith, saith the Lord, and I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, and there shall not be enough room to receive it. I'm going to stop right here for the radio. We've been coming to you from Doers of the Word Baptist Church in Newberry, Ohio. I'm Pastor Sanders. The title of the message today was, Why Do Dead People Always Vote for Democrats? And until next week, we want to say good morning, God bless, and remember, always, always, keep fighting the fight.